Hey everybody, welcome back to Allie's Voice. Um, I'm Allison Love Beatty, and today I would like to talk about the hemoglobin A1C um, test and the fructosamine test. There's actually a device called the, I think it's called the G1A. I spoke at the shareholders conference a couple of years ago because I thought the concept of the device was actually very intuitive, very smart, as compared to the um, the crutch that we've all come to know and love here in the United States, the gold standard of diabetes control, the hemoglobin A1C. The hemoglobin A1C is basically a test that measures your average blood sugars over the past three months. Um, really, when it comes down to fundamental evidence as to diabetes control, um, the hemoglobin A1C to me is very bland. It's real. It doesn't tell you very much other than than you know it correlates the numbers that you're looking at in your meter. And to me, that's just malarkey. It's all malarkey because the FDA uh, front and center says you know you could be. 20% plus or minus in either direction. So, you know, 20% in either direction of whatever that number is, if the A1C, um, the barometer, um, is 18 points between blood sugars, that's basically what it is. Um, it just seems kind of, I hate to use the word, you know, stupid, but it really is stupid to measure how well you control your diabetes based on numbers alone. What really matters, and the only reason you even chase the shadow of numbers and diabetes is because you're trying to prevent complications. So to me, a device like the G1A, or looking at the fructosamine test, it's giving you First of all, it's not measuring the hemoglobin of the blood. It's measuring the, I believe it's the albumin, which has a turnover rate of 21 days. So you're basically looking at whatever has happened in the past three weeks of your, your diabetes control. Is, you know, adding two units in the morning or taking, you know, one unit less at night doing anything, you know, good for you? or is, you know, changing up the types of food you're eating. You want to know if, you know, your results are driving you in the right direction. So, insofar as the hemoglobin A1C and the reliance on a number like your hemoglobin, uh, your, your HbA1c, I don't know. I really kind of think that, you know, insofar as diabetes control, you're kind of chasing, you know, you're chasing your imagination. You're not chasing results. Diabetes needs to be more results driven and leaning on blood sugar alone for control is you're missing the boat and I want I want to stop missing the boat. I want to know if what I'm doing is not a waste of my time. I'm tired of donating you know tube after tube after tube of blood. I get bruised up with these tubes and what what is it's all for not it's not showing me anything bring me a device that tells me if I'm doing a good job I want you know what if I'm gonna be poked and prodded <laughs> I want to be rewarded in some way because it sure as hell don't feel good um, anyway I'll stop thank you for joining me once again for one of my tirades um, what's your opinion? Everybody, the, this is, you know, it's a universal blog. People from overseas, they're familiar with fructosamine testing. The um, actual, the ADA at one of their conferences a couple of years ago, this was a very hot debate. You know, should we be testing fructosamine? Does it at all matter? I think it does. You know why? Because we're not using it right now. All right. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm right. You know, it's... Let's talk about it, everybody. What's your opinion? Do you even know about fructosamine? Has it ever been tested? And wouldn't you like to know the level of complications or the level of, you know, assault your body is receiving from the advanced glycation end products, which is basically the result of your body metabolizing glucose? How do we metabolize glucose? Well, those of us with insulin-dependent diabetes, it's only happening with our C-peptide absent insulin. I think C-peptide actually has a lot to do with 
quelling the assault from the advanced glycation end products, which are, in fact, the culprits in diabetes complications. You see, all the things that have been missing all these years, let's justify a reason to bring it back. All right, everybody, I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.